Hello and welcome to Cycling Around Britain. Every week I'll be taking my bike somewhere on public transport and then looking around for local places of interest and historical attractions. This week we'll be starting with the Isle of Purbeck. Here on the south coast of England, in the county of Dorset, lies the ancient town of Poole. Picturesque and located in an area of outstanding natural beauty, it's the perfect place for a bicycle tour. Just 20 minutes from Poole's town centre is Sandbanks, one of the most expensive places to live in the whole world and famed for its beautiful beaches. On these beaches you can walk straight into the neighbouring town of Bournemouth. But what interests us is the chain ferry which takes us across to Studland Peninsula. of the British summertime it's always important to remember to wear one's sun cream and of course always bring your puncture repair kit. We're cycling along the ferry road at the moment towards the little village of Studland. We're about to turn off onto Godlingston Heath which is one of the few places in Britain where you can find all six native species of British reptile. Up ahead, I am assured, is the Agglestone, a 400 ton, 5 metre tall rock placed haphazardly in the middle of the heath. Whilst on our way to the Agglestone, we stumble across a fine example of Britain's proud heritage buried up in the hillside, a Second World War pillbox. We're now on our way up to investigate. In preparation for the German invasion which never happened, and also getting ready for their invasion of Normandy. The Allies used these, these pillboxes here, from whence they could fire at any nasty Germans that came running up the hills towards them, with the relative safety of not having your head blown off by an artillery shell. Back in the period of the Second World War, the Allies famously used the surrounding area here as practice for the Normandy invasions, commonly known as D-Day. And here we have a classic example of the architecture of the time, commonly known as wartime architecture. Legend has it that this gargantuan stone was hurled here by the devil while stood on the Isle of Wight more than 20 miles that away in an attempt to hit Corf Castle which lies four miles over yonder. Modern theories include that it is part of a rock vein that runs right through the Isle of Purbeck or that it was placed here as part of some ritual burial. In the not too distant past it stood here like a mighty anvil atop this hill, but in the late 20th century it actually broke off and toppled to where it lies now. And here you can see the anchorage where it used to stand. It's listed in the local paper as one of the top 25 things to see in Dorset before you die, so I'm very glad we stopped by. On the other side of this hedge is a herd of fallow deer. They're notably shy, 
See how they're keeping an eye open, even though they have no natural predators in Britain. They're a pleasure to see for any cyclist. Having left the Agglestone, we're hopping back onto the road briefly to head through Studland Village on our way to the next stop on our visit, Old Harry Rocks. Of course, one of the things that makes our great nation what it is, is the unpredictability of the weather. So, make sure you always come prepared with a rain jacket. Standing in the midst of the vivid blue of the English Channel, Old Harry and his wife are giant stacks of chalk which rise up out of the ocean like watchmen. Now like the Avilstone where we've been before, Har Old Harry is also linked with the Isle of Wight. And it's believed that back in the day, Old Harry and the Needles were part of a great sea wall which stretched right the way across the 20 mile stretch. Now these few stones are all that remain of this sea wall, and Old Harry these days stands as the guardian that protects Stubborn's beaches from erosion, the work of the ocean. See how the water is much calmer on this side of the bay than it is on that side. Great lengths are being made to it at the moment to be able to preserve it as long as possible. How long it can be kept that way remains to be seen. As you can both hear and see, this is a great area for gatherings of seabirds, seagulls and cormorants being among the birds that make their nests atop the rocky cliffs. Coming up in part two, I cycle off into the brightening day, heading towards Swanage, Lulworth Cove and the staggering Durdledore.